Well, we have a Bible study that lasts about 30 minutes. So usually you want to consider a topic and a subject and maybe the Lord will um, shape it up to, that you can handle within this time frame with the people in front of you. My subject today is everything you do. Everything you do. Look at 1 Corinthians 10, 31. We read this verse frequently in this assembly. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. The immediate context is talking about believers eating or not eating things offered to idols. But I've always maintained there's a phrase in this verse that takes it out and makes it a universal principle. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink, and here's the phrase, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. We quote that a lot. We're very familiar with that verse here. And I was thinking the other day, Lord, how do you glorify you in everything we do? How do you glorify God in doing everything we do? He gave me a verse. He showed me a verse. This is not our text, but it's the verse that uh, opened this up study and made me decide to go this route. Colossians 3, 17. Well, does that mean we just think about God all the time? Well, that's part of it. We hear a lot here about God consciousness. You do think a lot about God, but just having God on your mind is not necessarily doing everything to His glory. Colossians 3, verse number 17. And whatsoever you do, there you go, everything you do. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. One way you glorify God in everything that you do is that if you do everything you do in the name of the Lord Jesus and giving thanks to Him. Giving thanks to Him. If your action cannot be associated with His name, it's an action that should not be done. Can you... We don't mind putting this on the religious side. You can give somebody a track in the name of the Lord and you think, okay, I gave that to him in the name of the Lord. But let me ask you something. Can you pump your gas in the name of the Lord? Ladies, can you cook a meal in the name of the Lord? The scripture says, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And with thanksgiving. Look at, go down to verse number 23. Here's another way you glorify God in all that you do. And whatsoever you do, notice the phrase, and the lesson is everything you do, do it heartily as, what's the next three words? I want, to, I want you to notice something, brothers and sisters, and not unto men. It's not you don't do it necessarily for the Lord. You do it to the Lord. You're conscious of God. You're conscious of Christ. The men that are before you, it says not unto men. And we're about to, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at different categories. But you do it to the Lord and not to men. On your job, do you do it for the boss or for the Lord? Do you love one another and your family to the Lord or just for one another? Do you pay your bills to the Lord? Everything you do, you do to the Lord and not to men. Heartily, it says, heartily to the men. So I'm thinking, okay, well, when you consider the universal general topic, everything you do, what comes to mind? And my first thought was, relationships your dealings with other people and with whom you have relationships you probably know where I'm going turn to Ephesians chapter number five Ephesians chapter number five look at verse number 22 verse number 22 
wives, all right? We're talking about the husband and wife relationship and particularly the relationship that the wife gives and brings and participates in. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as what? Unto the Lord. You don't submit your own, yourselves unto your husbands, period. Yes, there is a respect there, and you do consider your husband as unto the Lord. Folks, you know what I'm, the lesson is going to teach us? You have to do everything, treat everybody else as if they were the Lord. You treat them the way you treat the Lord. And I, I, we're going to see that in a, in a minute. Look at verse number 25. But it, it, this is not a chapter just on wives. Look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Love is not to be determined by your affection. Your love should be determined at by how Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Look at chapter 6, verse number 1. Children, obey your parents, period? No. Obey your parents what? In the Lord. For this is right. So all our relationships are based on an awareness of the Lord. Consciousness of God. Look at verse number 5. It begins with servants. Back in the day that this was written, there was still slavery. But you can take servants and make it into this employees. Employees. Servants. Verse number five. Be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart. What? As unto Christ. Treat your boss like the master you have in heaven. As, as much as is earthly possible, your master, any boss, any authority upon the earth is a reflection of Almighty God. Serve your masters as unto Christ. Okay, but what about... What about the masters? Look at verse number 9. And ye masters, okay, masters are employers, people in authority, bosses. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. If you're in a position of authority, you need to remember God's in authority over you. You are to do everything for the glory of God. You're to do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, including how you handle those you've hired. Those you've hired. And folks, that's not just on the job. That's in business. That's in business. Any relationship is to be done with the consciousness of the Lord. Look at verse number four of this chapter. I, I skipped this. I have this out of order. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Everything you, should, everything you do should be permeated with the knowledge of the Lord and you should do it with an attitude that you are doing it unto the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks for Him, uh, giving thanks and also unto Him. Unto Him. How do we treat others? What is the general rule of thumb? How can we glorify God in treating other people? Maybe people that, with whom you don't have a particular relationship. Matthew chapter number 7. This lesson this morning is covering familiar ground and scriptures that we all know by heart probably. Matthew 7, verse number 12. Therefore, and notice the phrase, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Brother Gary, how do I get along with worldlings? Treat them the way you want 
to be treated. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do that, but the principle is you treat others the way you want to be treated. What about that person behind the counter with the attitude? And you paid for this and it didn't work or whatever, or the food wasn't good, and they've got an attitude. If you cop an attitude back to them, you know what you're doing? You're treating them the way they're treating you. But don't you want to be treated better? What, about, what happens when you make an error or when you fall short? How do you want people to treat you? That's how you are to treat others. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In everything you do, do all to the glory of God. Handle your problems as unto the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. They'll calm you down. They'll give you a little perspective because you know what? Sometimes your emotions, when our emotions get inflamed, we don't think logically. We certainly don't think spiritually. I've always said Christians should learn to count to ten. Calm down a little bit. Psalm says, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? You, can, you need to think about why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And then you've got to think, okay, I'm a representative of Christ. He's within me. I'm supposed to act like he does and how he's instructed me to act. It's not easy. I believe it can be done by the empowering of the Holy Ghost. We're going to read that in a little while. Look at Luke 6, 31. This is a sister verse to this. Luke 6, 31. Everything you do. Luke 6, 31. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. I want to ask you a question, having read that verse. What are the exceptions? There are none given, are there? We should treat every other human being the way we want to be treated. No exceptions. And I believe in doing so, you'll glorify God. You'll glorify God. Galatians 6, 10. Galatians 6, 10. Well. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all. Notice men has been added, if you have that kind of uh, addition. So you can say, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Do good unto all. Period. Of course, it does say especially to those of the household of faith, but hell, those of the household of faith are included in the all. You do good. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Verse number 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any. And by the way, man is added again for evil unto any. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all. And once again, that man, the men there has been added to all. To all. This gives new light to me on a phrase, that, uh, on a passage that we quote a lot. Look at Matthew 25, and we think a lot about Matthew 25. Verses 37 through 40. We know the Lord takes very seriously how you treat His children and even how you treat His creation. But I want you to notice something, something I've never really totally considered here. Uh, Matthew 25, 37 through 40. Then shall the righteous answer him and say, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch 
as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you've done it unto who? Me. This is where I get my statement when I made earlier in the lesson. You treat everybody else like you'd treat the Lord. He says, if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. God consciousness, always being aware of Christ in everything. Brothers and sisters, let me reemphasize more than just your religious duty and even your faithful devotion. It's easy to do it here. We're all in, within these four walls. We love one another. We are, we're in one accord. We support one another. And that's a good thing. You get your batteries energized here. But this principle goes everywhere. And there are no exceptions. No exceptions. There's a song that was popular not too long ago, and the guy, the, the guy that's singing the song in the, in the words talks about how he's not paid attention to people much and, and he's under conviction about it. And he says, uh, so-and-so crosses my path. He says, what if it's Jesus and I walk away? I think about the passage about uh, entertaining strangers, for you've entertained angels or whatever, unawares. What if that's the Lord? You've got to treat everyone like their Lord. And you know what? You may get a super blessing or a lesson out of that. And I think about entertaining angels. Angels are messengers. You might learn something from God dealing with that person. But you're not, your notion is, I've got to do this as unto the Lord. And Jesus said, you've done it unto me. You've done it unto me. Let's read uh, also the flip side of this, 44 through 46. 44 through 46. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw with thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So when you think about everything you do, one category I think of is relationships. Your relationships with people with whom you have a personal relationship, Ephesians 5, all this family, fathers, wives, masters, servants. But I also think about how you handle situations. Situations. How you handle a situation involves more than just the people involved. It involves your attitude. Look at Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Notice what Paul said here. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, notice this, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Being content is a doing, is a doing. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And here is the key. I can do all things through whom? Which strengtheneth me. Christ makes you able to do these. And no matter whatever the situation is, you can be content. Folks, that would be a great witness to the world. If Christians get all upset and they fall apart, they panic, or if they plunge into despair and stay there, that's, a, that's not recommending Christ to anyone. But if we learn to be content, and notice it's not content when everything's great, to suffer need. Can you suffer need for the glory of God? Absolutely. And you can be content in that, knowing Christ Jesus will bring you out. He's the Alpha and the Omega. No, always remember when you enter into any season, that season has an ordained beginning and an ordained end by Almighty wise God. And you need to be content between the two, the beginning and the end. But he says, I've learned to do everything through Christ which strengthened me. And what did the Lord tell us? We won't turn there for time's sake. John 15, 5, separated from me, apart from me, you can do nothing. 
But here this verse says, in Christ we can do all things because he strengthened us. He strengthened us. So we have relationships. We have situations. Do all to the glory of God. What about the way we handle material things? How do you handle your checkbook? What do you think about your cell phone? What about that tea set that great grandma brought over on the Mayflower? What about your home? What about your clothes? What about material objects? Look at Luke 12. Folks, we need to be good stewards. We need to handle them and treat them i.e. use them for the glory of God. Be good stewards. Luke 12, 15, and one thing, here's one thing we need to remember. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. You do not define yourself by the objects in your life. They don't define who you are. That's one knowledge. That's one way to glorify God in handling possessions. You use them. You appreciate them. But they're not the sum total of your life. Folks, I think every one of us right now can look at the objects around us and our surroundings, and we can remember a time when they were not there, right? Have we all lived in different places? Have we all had different vehicles? Guess what? You're still here. You're still serving the Lord. The ones in the past are gone, and you have the objects that you have now. Use them for the glory of God. Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And notice this, this phrase, and be content, not in whatever state you're in, but be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What's our, what's our lesson and our main point? Do all to the glory of God. Do all as unto the Lord. Use the objects in your life with an awareness of God. With an awareness of God. 1 Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 4. And verse number 7, 1 Corinthians 4, verse number 7, For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Remember, every object in your life, every material thing has been given to you. Well, Brother Gary, you know what? I worked hard and I got paid for that and I bought that and, you know, it's mine. I can understand that if you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't become inordinate with that. Who gave you your job? Who gave you the ability to earn money? Who, get, who made it possible for you to purchase that? God did. God did. So keep the attitude right. Keep your mind on God, not the object. Keep your mind on God not the situation. Keep your mind on the Lord, not on the relationship. Do everything to the glory of God. Everything you do. Everything you do. What about the days we call them crash days or chill days? You've had a, a stressful week or whatever and, and you decide on a, a Saturday or whenever you're going to stay in the lounge chair and you're not going to do anything and you're going to relax, you're going to unwind. Do that for the glory of God. Honor Him in it. Just like when you're working your fingers to the bone and you see no end in sight, do that for the glory of God. Do that with the consciousness of the Lord. Do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ like we read in Colossians chapter number 3. Folks, there's no exception. There should be no activity that you can't do in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you can't put Christ's name upon it and associate Christ's name with it, then that's something you stay away from. That's something you don't do. 
If it's a relationship that cannot honor God, then you, do not enter, you don't need to enter into it. You don't need to maintain it. If it's an object from which you cannot serve God and be a good steward, then you don't need it. Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Matthew 10, 8, we won't turn there, but that's where it says, freely you have received, freely give. One way to glorify God in your objects is be ready, if necessary, to give them. Give them away, give them up, or to give them. It doesn't say you have to, but if you freely received, freely give. Freely give. 1 Corinthians 10, let's go back to where we started. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Let's read verses 25 and 26. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, asking no question for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything on the earth belongs to the Lord. Use it as such. Use it as such. Notice this gets repeated. Look down at verse number 28. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for consciousness' sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. You're not going to eat that same thing that you would eat privately because you don't have that conviction out of respect for that brother. But guess what? It all belongs to the Lord. It all belongs to the Lord. Do you see how everything gets back to God? Everything gets back to the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. Do all that you do in the name of the Lord Jesus and giving thanks unto the Father and to Him. It all comes back to him. Look at 1 Timothy. Too often we try to put evil in an object. Folks, objects don't have good or evil. It's how you deal with it. It's what you do with it. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. Verses 3 through 5. He's talking about how people, uh, 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 legalism and tie you down in the eyes of religion. You can't do this and you can't do that. But listen, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Here's the thing. This is why this is a Bible study lesson. The world doesn't know this. The world cannot have this philosophy. You have to know the truth. You have to be a follower of Christ to keep Christ consciousness. But let's go on. For every creature, and we know what that word means, right? We can also substitute the word creation, right? For every creation of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Too often, Christians apologize and feel guilty over things that they shouldn't. Because God created it, God provided it, then be a good steward of it. Just don't let anything fall into the realm of inordinate. Love and worship Him in every situation. Love and worship Him in every, situ uh, in every relationship. Love and serve Him with every object and material thing in your life. And you can do all, everything you do, to the glory of God. Finally, look at Ecclesi uh, let's close with Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes chapter number 12, verses 13 and 14, the last two verses in the book. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Brother Gary, what are you telling us? What are you talking about? Fear God and keep His commandments, and this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Finally, Ephesians 5.20. You'll stand before God in how you dealt with your relationships. You'll stand before God with how you handled every situation. And we'll stand before God with our stewardship of material things. 
Ephesians 5 and verse number 20. Giving thanks always for what? All things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice it says in the name. And we read in Colossians, everything you do, do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Folks, I've talked in a general, I've given you a general principle, but it applies to everything you do. Let's pray for one another that we would do this, right? Everything we do would be for the honor and glory of God with a consciousness of Him. Anybody have anything you want to say or add? Any comments? If not, stand with me please and we'll be dismissed.